practicing the biblical principles of the Catholic faith and manifesting the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, this is Receiving the Word with Father Todd Braggs. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and every expression of wickedness, and receive with meekness the engrafted Word which is able to save your souls. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. This is Father Todd speaking. Today, liturgically speaking, the church does celebrate the sixth Sunday after Trinity. And my sermon this morning is based upon the gospel appointed for today, coming to us from the fifth chapter of the gospel of St. Matthew, which I will read to you right now. Jesus said to his disciples, Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard it said, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt, be, thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, my dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, as I just read to you from this fifth chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, again, this part that I read to you today begins in verse 20. But again, this fifth chapter, along with the sixth chapter, along with the seventh chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, again, all three of these chapters are describing again, and transcribing for us, if you will, by St. Matthew, our Lord's famous Sermon on the Mount. Let me go back and read to you verse 1, which I didn't read to you right now, because as I stated, what I read began in verse 20. But going back to verse 1 of St. Matthew's fifth chapter, excuse me, it says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them. Bear in mind, even as this first verse of this fifth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel portrays for us, our Lord himself exuded, if you will, great authority and power not only in his presence, I would imagine, as he walked, but also in the words that he spoke, not only with the way that he presented them, but also with the, the great truthfulness that people could hear with their own ears, with the logic, again, that he used. As I'd like to say, as I have said in the past, again, our Lord would use examples that would be familiar to those that were listening to him 
and then the proverbial light bulb would go off above their heads and they would say, oh, that, that does make sense. I understand now. Even when our Lord was a child, again, if you will recall, when our blessed Lord was left behind in Jerusalem, again, when the Holy Family went there on pilgrimage, and again, Our Lady thought that the Divine Child was with St. Joseph, and St. Joseph thought that he was with his mother, and he was with neither one because he was left behind. He was there in the temple teaching and preaching. And even at that young age, it was written of him that people could not believe that he was teaching and speaking these things with such authority. So it stands to reason again, as I stated, this fifth chapter begins our Lord's famous Sermon on the Mount where the great vast multitude had gathered to hear him teaching and preaching and telling people about God. And of course, even in the part that we heard tell today, today, our Lord again was giving an example of the law, but he was saying following the law was not merely enough. We must take it a step further. And I think this in part is what again irritated the scribes and the Pharisees to no end. Because you have to remember, dear friends, that the scribes and the Pharisees, the rulers of the temple, they again thought of themselves as being the the arbiters of the law. They saw themselves as being the moral authority of the law. They saw themselves as being the experts of the law. And here comes this itinerant teacher, this itinerant rabbi, who was traveling around with his group of disciples, and the And the crowds, the multitudes, were just thronging to him, were gathered around, listening to him. And so they saw themselves, again, in great danger because, again, he was preaching, and yet they saw, in their minds at least, that he was preaching against the law to a certain degree. But again, even our blessed Lord himself said that this was not the case. Let me read to you here in verse 17. Remember what I read to you began in verse 20. I want to go back a few verses to show you exactly what I'm talking about. In verse 17 of this fifth chapter, our Lord said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And so as a result, again, as I state, dear friends, our Lord himself with his own words says, he came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. And as our blessed Lord saw fit, he preached this to the multitudes, and he used the example of Thou hast heard them say from on of old, Thou shalt not kill. Now, I would suggest, again, at least from my own understanding, my own perspective, my own way of living for my entire life, Thou shalt not kill is actually a fairly good, uh, uh, easy rule to follow. I've never killed anyone my entire life unless you're in the a homicidal maniac, a, a serial killer, somebody along those lines that goes along and, and thinks so little of another human being's life, which unfortunately we do have those examples, don't get me wrong, but the point I'm making is for the vast majority of people throughout time, and including today, this would be an easy rule to follow. Thou shalt not kill. But you see, friends, with our Lord, 
he always took it a step further. And in light of what we read in verse 17, he's not disparaging this law by any means, obviously. He's fulfilling it. And he is fulfilling it by taking it a step further, if you will. Because our Lord went on to say, again, he stated, You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Our Lord, you see, dear friends, recognizes that, again, in the times in which someone is killed, that's just if the proverbial tip of the iceberg, so to speak. That is the outer actions or the outer effects of something that has begun inside, internally, internally, not only in the mind, but in the heart. So you see, dear friends, when our Lord speaks of this, and takes it a step further, he wants to eradicate it at the very roots, if you will, that we should not be angry without a cause. And I'd like to, again, if, if you'll permit me, don't we look for so many causes? If we get angry with other people when we're driving because either they're driving too slow and this makes us angry or they're driving too fast and this makes us angry or they're tailgating and this makes us angry, aren't we in a certain way looking for a cause? Uh, in other words, a reason to be angry? If someone slanders us, if someone besmirches our good name, if someone does something against us and it causes us to be angry, aren't we looking for a cause to be angry? Again, dear friends, as I've said so often in the past, because it's so true, sometimes, quite frankly, we do have a right to be upset. Sometimes we do have a right to be angry. And yet, despite that fact, anger, whether it's right or wrong, anger still has the same effect in us that it just eats us up inside. It just churns us up inside internally. And our Lord only wishes the best for his children. And so I dare say this is certainly one of the reasons why our Lord is urging us not to be angry. Because he knows deep down inside, anger can certainly kill. Not kill necessarily someone else, but can kill us can kill the person that is angry. Let me fast forward a little bit further on. Again, it's in this, it's in this same fifth chapter. Our Lord is still preaching his Sermon on the Mount, but I didn't read it to you earlier. I'm going to fast forward to verse 43. Our Lord said the following, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. You see, that's why I made the point, dear friends, to say earlier, it, to me it's easy to follow the commandment, thou shalt not kill. That's relatively easy. I've gone my entire life without doing it. These words, though, that I just read to you. Is there not a day that goes by that we don't get angry with someone else? 
that we get angry with our neighbor, that we get angry about something that has been done. We get angry about something we've read. We get angry about something we've seen on the news, especially in the day in which we live, especially via watching the news and turning on social media, so to speak, and reading and seeing all these different things. It's without a doubt, it's very easy to get angry. And yet, as I stated to you a little bit ago, we, we ultimately realize that anger tears us up inside, as I stated. Anger, even when we're right in being angry, ang angry and having anger just tears us to pieces. And our blessed Lord said that we should pray for them that persecute us. Friends, as I like to say, our Lord just didn't talk the talk. He walked the walk. And even hanging from the cross, dear friends, our blessed Lord himself, one of the final words he spoke, hanging as he was dying on the cross, said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Friends, we are called as God's instruments here on earth. We are called as members of his church, the church in which he founded. We are called to do his work here on earth. And as hard as it may be, as difficult as it may be for us to do, we are called to love God one another, to love as our blessed Lord loved. You see, God sent his son into the world for all of his children, not just some, not just the perfect, not just that followed the law, not those that, that again, deserved to be loved. You see, this was the mistake of the Pharisees and the scribes they felt that some were good enough to deserve the love of God, while others were not. That, as I like to say again, it will be up, ultimately, it will be up to God to decide. We, for our part, are called to live in the love of God and to do what we can to help propagate, if you will, that love throughout the world. And that begins with us, where we are here and now around us. We may pray for God's kingdom to come to the earth, and yet we don't do what we can to propagate that kingdom around us in the here and the now. Why do I say that? Because we're too busy getting upset about this, about that, about the other. We're too busy looking for a cause about being upset. We're too busy looking for something, as it was stated, I think, two weeks ago when we read the gospel. We're too busy looking, again, for the plank Friends, we need to be more concerned with ourselves. We need to be more concerned about doing what God has called us to do. And again, I, have, I, I don't have time so much to be concerned with other folks because I, I'm really busy being concerned with what I can do, again, or my lack thereof, more correctly stated. I got enough to work on myself, is my point. And so this day, dear friends, let us commit ourselves more deeply than ever to God. Let us commit ourselves to living God's way of life here on earth, to love and to serve him in this life so that we can be with him and spend eternity in his blessed presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, 
God bless you, dear friends. Let me take just an extra moment or so to remind all of you that should you want to get in touch with receiving the Word, we'd be delighted to hear from you. Here's our website, www.encouragementfortoday.com. That's www.encouragementfortoday.com. Or write us at 829 Northeast Chester Avenue, Topeka, Kansas, 66616. That's 829 Northeast Chester Avenue, Topeka, Kansas, 66616. Knowing what a big difference encouragement makes in a person's life, you will not only find Father Todd's Sunday sermons, but also other assorted podcasts, audios, and devotional blogs that will be a help in your faithful walk with the Lord. And that will help you take heart when the going gets tough and the way feels long. I'm Father Francis Dominic, and on behalf of Father Todd Braggs and receiving the word, thanks for listening.